welcome to my vlog. This is not a coincidence that I'm standing right here in front of this big movie billboard. This year marks the 20 year anniversary of the most successful franchise in the world, Fast and the Furious. It sold over six billion dollars. On June 25th, the Fast Saga F9 was released in the movie theaters and I thought what would be a better time to honor one of the main characters, Paul Walker, who lost his life in 2013. In this vlog, I would like to take you to movie locations from the movie. I'd like to take you to the exact spot where Roger Rodas and Paul Walker lost their lives. And I also want to show you the final resting place where Paul Walker got laid to rest. Let's do it. Try to do all this without messing up speaking, without people honking at you, without people walking behind you, it's not easy. Whee! This year marks the 20 year anniversary of the most successful French fries. In Time to honor one of the most characters, Paul Walker. It's heartbreaking to think if the accident would have never happened, Paul Walker would have been on this billboard too. And there's another one right here. And check this place out here. They got some pretty fast cars. Ferrari, Ferrari. So this is absolutely incredible for me to be here. This is Neptune's Net. A lot of movies were filmed here. Brian O'Connor was racing the Ferrari right here on the PCH. And then afterwards he pulled in right here into the restaurant. And this is the scene from the Fast and the Furious. We got Lauren Patty and Keanu Reeves in Point Break. Johnny Utah and Tyler, he walked right through this door right here. And believe it or not, Tom Cruise walked into this door in 1983 in the movie Losing It. And they did a food fight inside the restaurant. Also a scene from Iron Man 3 was filmed in here. It's hard to see behind the RV, it's going down. There's a guard railing right here and the sign no alcohol, which you can see in the picture would have been right here. This is where the patio was outside. And this is where Paul Walker and Vin Diesel were sitting. Here it is, the original Fast and the Furious house, Dominic Toretto's house. This is where all the parties, where everything happened, right in front of this house. And I think for the F9, they repainted the whole thing. It used to be white, and now it's kind of bluish looking. Currently, there is somebody living in the house, and it's understandable that they don't want to talk to you. The lady's in the backyard doing her yard work. In the movie, you did not see the fence, neither you have seen all the bushes here. They were not here. In this scene, we've seen the house getting blown up, but I don't think it was real. I think it was all CGI. There's Dominic in the front of it. In this picture, you can see there were no bushes there. They only had a mailbox, 1327. Remember the scene when Brian and Dominic were pointing guns at each other? And then Jesse came and he was apologizing. It's right before the guys on the motorcycle showed up. That was taken right here. And right in this exact place is where Jesse got killed. I am wondering if the cast members ever come down here and remember the time when they first filmed this. And all this happened right here in front of the house, inside the house. We know it's a movie, but it's so surreal. When you stand here, you can actually picture everything happening in your head and compare it to the movie. It is a real house and this is really hard to understand. You still think Dominic is gonna come out this door any second? I don't blame the lady, but I don't think she really cares about that that is an iconic house here. She owns it. I would love to go in the back where I always was sitting in the background was downtown LA. I mean, this is such an iconic place being here. How come no big fan ever bought this house and made it into like a museum? I guess all the insurance you have to buy and all that stuff, but that would have been awesome. So the house is right here. If we pan over a little bit, we're on East Kensington Road. And you also can tell 
where we are right now because all the donuts right here in the middle of the street, all the skid marks from people that imitate the Fast and the Furious or paying their respect. And here we are at the Bob's Market, AKA Toretto's Market. I highly recommend for you guys to visit locations because it really feels like you're in the movie. And this is where Brian parked his car. It's hard to see with all the glare, but here you can buy all the different cars. We got the Toyota Supra, then we got Goms, Plymouths. The store looks a little different now, but this is where Brian was sitting down every day eating his tuna sandwich without crust. While they were fighting, Dominic was sitting in the back here. This is Toretto's Market. And basically, this is what he was eating. Tuna fish sandwich with all the crust. And this is where Brian comes out of the market before the fight scene. Another picture to match up right before the fight scene. Even though it's been over 20 years, I think the city finally got fed up. They put all those bumpers or those cones up here so people cannot do those donuts anymore because this is gonna be a really popular spot after F9 is coming out. Remember that scene when Dominic fires Brian? That was taken right here. Bob's Market, Toretto's Market. This is a scene in the movie where the Asian guy with the motorcycle who just killed Jesse comes down the street. Brian parks his car, shoots at him, and he slides down against this curb and dies right here. This is the scene. This is where he comes out of the car and checks if he's dead. He feels his pulse right here. The mirror changed over the years. This is Levesa Stallone's son, Sage Stallone. But the scene happened right here. You can see the motorcycle lane right there. And this is where Paul Walker, AKA Ryan O'Connor was standing right here. It's a little weird to think that Paul Walker was standing in this exact spot. This is where it's all started, the fatal day in Santa Clarita. Let's go back in time, November 30th, 2013. This is Roger Rodas and Paul Walker's auto shop always evolving. Roger and Paul founded the charity together. It was right here in front of the auto shop where they had a toy drive and a car show for the victims of the typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. It's a little weird to think that all this happened right here. It's just a time difference. And the toy drive was a really good success. Everybody was happy. There's a lot of fans here. There's a lot of high performance cars standing around. People are walking around looking at cars. And Paul Walker walks around and takes pictures with all his fans. Do you think Paul Walker ever sat on that bench? Just imagine how many times Paul Walker walked through those doors. There's still a sticker on here that says always evolving. And if you look on the internet, you can find a lot of pictures of the fans taking pictures with Paul. Some fans were really lucky to get a picture with him that day. He was really a humble guy. Like this one with a lucky fan, it was right here. And he was standing right there. Here's another one where you can see those valves in the background. This one was taken right in front of the garage. Nobody had the slightest idea that Paul Walker had to die that day. It's such a shame. I'm not sure, but I think I saw in an interview that this guy was Paul Walker's friend and he drove the Carrera out of the garage. There was plenty of cars to look at that day. I'm not sure if this is one of Paul's cars, but it says always evolving right in front of the garage. This is where they drove in and out. It was right here where they parked the Porsche Carrera right before they went on the joyride. And if you zoom in a little bit, you see Paul Walker smiling. Roger Rodas is right next to him. That was just minutes before they took off. It was parked right here. Yeah, this is where the infamous car was parked. And Paul Walker said in an interview that that was his dream car, a Porsche 2005 GT Carrera supercar. The cost is around $400,000. The speed is over 205 miles an hour. And then we got the 5.7 liter V10 engine. And it's a six speed manual transmission. 
This one is the convertible. When Paul Walker and Roger Rhodes drove off, it was closed. In this picture, you can see the car trailer always evolving right in front of the business. That was their trailer to pull cars. This is probably one of the last pictures of Paul Walker when he was alive getting into the car. You see the Audi right in front of it. I wish I had a DeLorean time machine and go back in time and tell Paul not to take that ride that day. Paul Walker always loved to ride fast cars. He was a car enthusiast. He had over 30 high performance cars. And he was not only a car racer on film, he also was a car racer in real life. He loved to drive fast. He read Roger Rodas at the car race and they became friends and then they opened up this shop right here. He always had the love for speed. And of course, Roger Rodas was a professional car racer. He had many trophies, but we never really know and we're never gonna find out what happened that day, why he lost control about that car. Of course, it was the speed for sure, but what else happened? Was it the tires? Was it the steering? Who knows? We will never know. There's one more picture where Roger Rodas is driving off and Paul Walker sits in the passenger seat and they're going this way. Like I said, there were so many people around that day. He was walking back and forth here. Two super successful people. Roger Rodas was only 38 and Paul Walker was 40 years when they died. And that's where he drove off. They just want to do a little joyride and Paul Walker said to his friend, I'll be right back. And you can literally see the crash site, the buildings over there. This is where it happened. And we go in there right now. The street is pretty wide, but when you come here approximately with 100 miles an hour, this is a really tight curve. And this is the last thing Paul Walker and Roger Rodas saw before they die. And this is the place of impact. You see, it's right here. I am standing in the middle of a street where Kelly Johnson Parkway turns into Hercules Street. I'm here on a Sunday morning. This is an industrial area. There's nobody around. The best time to come here is actually on a Sunday. This is where the final crash happened, where uh, Roger Rodas and Paul Walker lost their lives. I've seen many videos on YouTube, but I actually wanted to come here and see it for myself. It's always a really weird feeling if you stand there where it exactly happened. And I also want to pay my respects, of course. It is so quiet here early in the morning on Kelly Johnson's Parkway. You see all the donut marks and the skid marks from the tires, burnouts, right in front of the crash site. This is almost like they're paying respect to Paul Walker. I mean, the whole street is full of skid marks. There used to be a security camera up here that recorded the crash site. Not really the crash. You couldn't see the car, but you could see how that light pole fell over in two of the trees. When Roger came around the corner, this is a little bit uphill, so he must accelerate, went all the way up here, and from what I heard, one of Paul Walker's friend said when he came to the crash site, he saw that the tree was hit and there was like red paint on the tree. This is the day when he was there taking a picture. You can't really see the red paint, but so, he must have hit here first, hit the curb, smashed into this lighting pole, bent all this down, smashed into a tree right here, and crashed in the second tree, which was right here. It happened right in front of this hypercell building. I also got some pictures I want to match up. There's literally nobody here right now, but in the next picture you see hundreds of fans paying their respect right here at the crash site. And when I come to a place like this, I always try to imagine how everything happened. How he actually hit, came around the corner, hit that pole, hit those trees. I can't believe it's been already eight years since it happened. And look, a couple of days after the crash, hundreds and hundreds of people came here and paid their respect. He influenced their lives so much. People loved him. Look at all those people. The picture is not the best one, but this is Tyrese Gibson standing here at the crash site. Of course, Vin Diesel was here talking through his police speaker that night, thanking all the people to come down here. What are those crows? They're all looking at me. So this is not the original pole, but you can see they painted over many times. People write their names. I don't know why they not leave it, but you can see right here on concrete, rest in peace, Paul Walker. 
Normally there's names right all the way around the curb. What they should do is they put a plaque or something here. I don't know why they don't do it. And there's some other people, at least some strawberries, a little car. Look how mangled up the car was. When you try to find the exact place, you see that sign right here. And when you look in the picture, you see the sign right here. So the car was actually right here. Two guys recorded the car burning right after it happened. You can see the video also on YouTube. And then one of Paul Walker's childhood friends, he, he was at the fundraiser too. He ran over and tried to pull him out of the car, but it was too late already. The crash site looked like a scene straight out of a movie, like Fast and the Furious. At the time, the speed limit was 45. That reduced it down to 40 now. The lock on the tree, somebody glued the car to the tree. Kobe was here. Somebody wrote, see you at the finish line, Paul Walker. I wanted to bring the car out here where the crash site is. Rest in peace, Paul Walker and Roger Rodas. One sad thing I think is I'm just a YouTube vlogger. I never met Paul Walker. I don't really know him. It would be great if one of the cast members would have do a vlog one day and talk about Paul Walker, how great he was. You know, we don't really know anything about it. I'm just come here and I show you the aftermath, but I would like to talk to somebody who knew him. Both families sued Porsche, the car company. The judge ruled for Porsche on the claim of wrongful death. He said death did not occur as a result of any wrongdoing by the automaker Porsche. So Porsche was not at fault. The investigator said there could have been a problem with the tires because they've been over nine years old. Paul Walker's daughter also sued the Roger Rodas estate for wrongful death and she got granted $10.1 million. Rumor also has it that somebody sold the original sunglasses from the crash site, a fire extinguisher, and some debris. But that's just a rumor, it was never confirmed. This accident occurred right when he was filming Fast and the Furious 7. So to finish the movie, they used his brother Cody and Caleb to stand in as him. And of course, they also used CGI. Here you see a little different perspective. This is filmed from on top of the hill where the security camera used to be. But just imagine how big the street is. I said it before. Why exactly they hit the tree right there? Why didn't they spin out to the left? Nothing would have happened. It would just swirl around in the middle of a street. Hopefully I didn't offend any of the family members with this video. I just wanted to do this video to keep Paul Walker's legacy going and for the people to see where it all happened. We don't really know that Roger Rodas want to impress Paul Walker, how good he drives. Sometimes we do stupid things just to impress other people, but sometimes the outcome is not really worth it. So be safe out there. I know all the young people that are saying, ah, oh, yeah, right. They just want to drive fast. I did the same thing. When I was 18 years old, I got my driver's license. The first day I got it, I got my dad's Mercedes and I was driving on the Autobahn as fast as I could. Now I think about it and I think, how dumb was I back then? We're at the court of Christus right here. And I thought I'm gonna pay my respect. Right here, Roger Wilson Rodas. Beloved husband, daddy, son, brother, uncle, and friend. The love of my life. Roger Rodas is buried at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale and Paul Walker is at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood. What, look at this, whole family. What are they doing here? Don't be scared. It's only me, German in Venice. Hey, which one of you guys is Rudolph? Rudolph! And this is it, Paul Walker's final resting place. It is so surreal to be here. I don't really know Paul and I never met him, but for some reason, I was a young man, had a dream. He made his dream. He became famous, became a superstar. And I brought some flowers for him. Let's put them right here on the side.
And then when you pan over to the right, this is where the iconic Hollywood sign is, right here. So he's buried behind the Hollywood sign. I love going to celebrity grave sites, but it's also really scary to think we are gonna go. It's a really scary thought. I also want to say I really feel bad for his parents. That should have never happened that the kid dies before the parents. Normally parents die first and then the kids. So it must have been double hard for the parents to accept that lost the kid. And he was in his prime of his life, only 40 years old. Good looking young man, successful, great family, everything going for him. And then in a second, he loses his life. And the worst part is it wasn't even his fault. We don't really know what happened that the accident occurred, but he had no influence of it. It was just his destiny, but he loved fast cars. Well, my friends, that was it. Live here from the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood. And I really hope you enjoyed this little video I did. I did it because a lot of people haven't seen the crash site yet. A lot of people haven't seen his final resting place yet. There are pictures on the internet and other videos, but I wanted to do like a little video about him. So for the future generation to see what Paul Walker was all about and where everything happened. I hope you like this little video clips I put together from where all the movie location happened. If you like the video, maybe you want to give it a thumbs up, push the notification bell, and maybe you subscribe to my channel. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. Thanks for all the memories you gave us. I see you guys later. Tschüssing.